Okay, I'll admit, when I first saw this paper, 2003 performance modeling, I thought, ugh, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah. But you know how it is? Sometimes the dustiest topic can have these little gold nuggets you know, hidden in there. Absolutely. And this one, this one really surprised me, honestly. Well, and it's interesting because it's not really about technology. Right. Even though performance modeling makes you think, oh, we're going to be talking about computers or something. This is really about how to understand what makes things work better. That's what I like, too, because who doesn't like everyone has been in that situation where it's like, why are we doing it this way? Yeah. This is this makes no sense. Exactly. Like, why is this so hard? And this paper gives us a framework for understanding that, and they call it human asset enabler analysis. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like we need to unpack that a little because it sounds a little bit like, you know, corporate jargony. It does. So what are they talking about when they say that? So think about it this way. Every task, every role, whatever, needs certain ingredients to be successful. Right. Yeah. And some of those ingredients are skills, things that you can learn, develop, right? But others are more like inherent traits or talents. Okay. The paper calls these the showstopper enablers. These are the things that if you don't have them, you're not going to be successful in a certain area. Showstopper enablers. Okay. So like it's the one thing, if you're missing it, it's like the whole operation shuts down. Exactly. Yeah. So for example, imagine you are hiring for a role where meticulous attention to detail is absolutely mission critical, like a financial analyst or an air traffic controller. Yeah, don't be doing that. You're much better off finding someone who is just naturally wired for that kind of precision than trying to coach it into someone who isn't, right? Right, right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't teach that. Like some things you can teach, some things you can't. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Like when you're putting a team together or even just assessing your own what you're good at and not good at. Absolutely. Interesting. Now, the paper also highlights something else that's really crucial, and it's this idea that it's not just about the people, it's about the whole system that they work within. So they emphasize the need for balance between what they call human assets and environmental assets. Okay, now what is an environmental asset? I'm picturing a nice plant in my office, which is great, but what are we talking about? Not quite. Think about it this way. It's everything that influences performance around the individual. So tools, technology, access to information, the company culture, the level of support they receive, all of these factors play a huge role. So it's like you can have the most talented musician in the world, but if you give them a broken instrument, right. they're not going to sound that great. That's a great analogy. And this paper actually gives a real world example of a company that was blaming its employees for low productivity. Oh, no. And it turned out they were using completely outdated software and had received almost no training. Whoa. They were set up to fail from the get-go. That's rough. It reminds me of this one time I had this job mm -hmm. and like the computer systems were constantly crashing. Oh. Talk about a productivity killer. Mm -hmm. It's like I felt like I was constantly swimming upstream just to get like basic things done. And that's exactly what the paper's highlighting, right? These these sort of invisible factors that can make or break performance. Yeah. It's not just about, you know, individual effort. Oh, it's right. about creating an environment where people can actually do their best work. And I imagine when those environmental assets are lacking, yeah. it doesn't just impact productivity. It probably, like, kills morale. Oh, absolutely. And just, even, like, employee retention, probably. Absolutely. If people just feel constantly frustrated or held back by their environment, they're going to start looking for the exit. And who can blame them? So, you know, all this, how can we actually put this information to use? So the paper dives into something called human asset management systems. HAMS for short. HAMS. Okay, now, I'm not going to lie. When I hear HAMS, I'm thinking about, like, a delicious holiday meal. Right. But I have a feeling it's a little more complicated than that. It is a little bit more complex than that, although... You're not wrong to think about it strategically. Okay. Hamas is really about approaching, you know, performance with intention. Right. It's about aligning the right people with the right processes and then providing them with the environmental support they need to thrive. So it's like instead of just like throwing people at a problem and hoping for the best, you're really strategically thinking about how do we set everybody up for success from day one? Exactly. And the paper offers some really actionable takeaways here. Okay. Like what? 
For example, it stresses the importance of clearly defining your desired outcomes mm -hmm. before you even start designing a process or hiring for a role. Right. What are we ultimately trying to achieve? Yeah, because if you don't know where you're going, right. any road or- Any you know, road will get you there, exactly. Yeah. Or nowhere, more likely. Right, exactly. So once you have that clear objective, then you can start thinking about, you know, those showstopper enablers we talked about. Right. Are there certain skills or traits that are non-negotiable for this particular role? Okay, so you're like, you're setting the stage for success by like, Really being intentional about who you bring in and then what you ask them to do. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then finally, the paper emphasizes the importance of regularly assessing and adjusting those environmental assets. Yeah. Right? Are the tools, the technology, the information still supporting optimal performance? Is the company culture conducive to the kind of work that you're asking people to do? It's not a set it and forget it kind of deal. Right. Like what got you here won't get you there or whatever that saying is. Exactly. You got to keep raising the bar. Yeah. You can't just like rest on your laurels. Right. Complacency is the enemy of progress, as they say. Yeah. it's You have to like keep pushing forward, but also make sure you're like, you know, got the right support in place. Exactly. You've got to keep your finger on the pulse of both the the human and the environmental factors. So much good stuff in this paper. And it's, you know, even though it's from 2003. Right. It feels really relevant. Absolute. To how we work today. Totally. Makes you wonder, though, because this predates, you know, yeah. <laughs> the whole remote work. Right. Boom. Right. And just like totally. all the digital tools. I mean, totally. I bet that adds a whole other like wrinkle to this whole thing. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, how do you create that supportive environment when everyone's working from their own home? Right. Right. And how do you even measure performance when those old traditional metrics maybe don't apply anymore? It's like the game's totally different now. Right. And we're still figuring out the rules. Exactly. And that's what makes this whole conversation so fascinating. Right, right. We're all kind of, you know, navigating this new world of work. Yeah. And it really requires us to kind of rethink those old assumptions totally and come up with new solutions. Mm. So I think that's a good like question for all of our listeners out there. Like yeah. if you were going to design a performance system for like today's world, mm. you know, one that takes into account right. remote work and all the digital tools and, you know, all of it. Yeah. What would that look like? Yeah. What would you prioritize? What would you, what would you make sure? What would you measure? Yeah. What would you measure? That's a good question. I don't know. That's something to think about. Something to ponder. Right. We've given everyone their homework. There you go. Well, this has been this has been really interesting. Yeah. I really appreciate you yeah. taking the, the time to break all this down with me. This has been great. Oh, it's my pleasure. Always happy to geek out about performance optimization. And for everybody listening, thank you for joining us for this deep dive. Yes, thank you. And we will catch you next time.